everybody. I sure hope everybody's doing good. Uh, boy, it's been a busy morning for me this morning. I got up and uh, <clears throat> the vet called and they said that Jasper is doing really good. They said that he's letting them pet him and that he's just all up in their face wanting loving and she said he's a totally different cat with them. And she said he's doing real good. And I said, well, you know, it's about, it made me cry because that baby just needs some love. And he's been through so much. You know, they called me yesterday and they said that we could go see him. But And I really wanted to. I wanted to so badly. But, you know, it's just really, it doesn't do them any good. It wouldn't have done him any good for me to go see him and then to leave him again. And you know, the vet told us that before when he was in the hospital before, they told us that they really, I mean, you know, they can't stop people from seeing their pets, of course, but, got gum in my mouth, but she says it really depresses them. And I know it has to. It has to depress them when you go see them and then leave them again. And Jasper's been through so much that I just, I wanted, I wanted to do what was best for him. And that was to not get him excited about seeing me and th him thinking that he was going to go home and then I had to leave him down there again. So, so she said, if everything goes all right, I may get to go, sit, go get him tomorrow. And I'm so happy. I just, I want to thank everybody for their prayers and good thoughts. And I got to get that gum out of my mouth. <laughs> You know, and just, you all been so supportive, and I just couldn't ask for better friends. Um, a few things that's been happening, James had a good eye doctor. You know, uh, I told you he got that power, power washer. And about two or three weeks ago, he started washing down the house. And ever since then, he told me that he's having trouble seeing out of one of his eyes. He can see all the way around, but just directly seeing out, he couldn't, and I knew exactly what it was. He thinks he got a chemical in his eye. I knew he didn't. I knew that he had a blood vessel where it burst in the back of his eye. And when he went to the doctor, he said, that's exactly what had happened. James has had a blood vessel burst in his eye, so now he has to go to a specialist that's two and a half hour away one one way and he may have to do laser laser surgery on his eye I don't know it's just James says it's getting a little bit better and the doctor said it might get a little bit better you know start clearing up all that blood in the back of his eye but he told James he was trying to see through that blood and that's why he couldn't see very good and you all ain't going to believe this I tell you what I do, you know, I'm starting to take this a little bit personal. <laughs> Not really, because I know so many people have sicknesses and sick parents and animals and children and, you know, so many people's out of work and, but you know the new plant they were building? It's about ready to bring it online. They were going to hire 480 men. And James possibly could have, you know, he's paneled for that job. He's worked there before. Possibly, if they didn't open up his uh, place of business, his prior mines, um, he might have got a job there. That thing burnt to the ground last night. It, the main building that handles all the coal, blends it, and sends it to the washers and all the control room and all that. The main thing, burnt. It was 11 stories high, brand new building. It burnt to about the third story. I mean, I'm about speechless about it. I mean, I really think it was, I, you know, you gotta think something's up with that. And there, I know everybody around here was getting excited about it being open. Not only was it going to employ 480 men, but it handles six mining operations. So all those men were going to go back to work. You know, thousands of people were going to, 
you know, be benefited by this. And now it's burnt down again. And I, James doesn't think he'll ever go back to work there. Don't even know. I mean, it's just, it's just so shocking. I just... But, you know, I think about those people down in the Gulf and, you know, their way of life has changed so much. And this whole world, you know, Billy CTV, in his last, uh, his last video, he talked about how the world was getting so wacky. Well, it is. It's been wacky. People, people don't tolerate each other anymore. They're, you know, no respect for each other and uh, businesses. Look at our government, Lord Hammer. Look at the governments of the world. I mean, look at Ken um, and you know, I, it's like I told Billy. I said, I wish I could say I had hope, but I don't. I do not have hope that things are going to get better. I do not think our economy is going to get better. I don't think all this pollution and stuff is going to get better. I don't think our government's going to get better. We're trillions of dollars in debt. We are drowning in debt. It's not going to get any better. First of all, if you don't got people working, how are they going to pay the taxes to help pay the, help the government pay its bills? It's just not going to get any better. And I, I, I don't want them to seem down about it, but we got to open up our eyes. <sighs> but anyhow, I don't want to be... The good news is my baby might be coming home. I've been trying to clean, um, cause I, I told James I said I so don't want his incision to get infected, and I was worried that he would come home and go hide. You know what I mean? So all the places that, uh, all the places that, why well, this got a man in the road right here stopping me? All the places in the house that he likes to hide, like under the couch and. I've pulled all that out and I'm going to try to, I've vacuumed and trying to get places where I'm afraid that he'll get, um, he'll get, if, you know, his incision infected if he wallows in dust and stuff. And they clipped him. He's going to be so cute. I just can't wait to see him. I just hope he hasn't forgotten me. I told James I was so worried that he, you know, it makes me want to cry. I was afraid he's, Afraid that uh, he was going to forget me. And I'm also afraid, you know, that surgery was a major surgery. And I still haven't found out whether or not uh, he got a total colectomy or a subtotal colectomy. I'll find that out from the doctor. The total colectomy is when they take out his entire colon and attach his small intestines to his rectum. It is a harder surgery because one tube doesn't fit exactly right onto the other tube. Now, if he's a subtotal colectomy, which means they've left a part of his colon and it's easier to attach because both sides are the same size. But in a subtotal colectomy where they leave the colon, he can still get megacolon in that section of his colon. They may have to go back and do it again. So I don't know what he's gotten. And they say, I've read online, that the third day after surgery, if nothing happens by the third day, uh, that he should be okay. Now, tomorrow will be the third day. We had it Monday evening, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And what it is is they're looking for leakage inside if he, you know, if he starts uh, having a fever and stuff and... They're looking for that inside, you know, where they connected the tubes for that to leak, leak into the abdomen. So, they've been giving them high doses of um, antibiotics, and uh, she said today he finally ate. He's not eaten anything since Friday, you know, and that's dangerous for a cat. Uh, they don't eat, and but she said he ate this morning and just let them uh, love on him. Well, cry like a little baby. But got my hair cut. Man, I got it whacked off, and I have sweated like a little jungle monkey. <laughs> it's all it's all a mess and stuff. But um, so anyway. 
I'm almost home, I'm a few miles away from home, and then I'll let you go. This is Melissa reporting from Alva Holler. Bye, everybody.